Hello. In the interests of being as cool and as exciting as a Nickelodeon presenter, I'm now going to talk you through the process of digestion using these buckets and bowls and liquids. So, here we go. This morning, I had toast for breakfast. Toast. Co-op toast on clearance. Only the best. Yeah, yeah. So, what did I do? I put some bread in my mouth. I then, I then realized, you know what? That's not quite enough. I was hungry. So then I put a banana in as well. What? Banana. Have a banana. I put it in the mouth. Right, cool. Then I thought, you know what? I'm not quite there yet. Still a bit hungry. Let's have some Weetabix. So I put some Weetabix in as well. And then what did I do? I chewed the food. Physical digestion, mechanical digestion, using my teeth. So my fists represent my teeth. Yeah. I chewed it all together. Yum, yum. Was my mouth produced some saliva, which helps with that. So here we go. Saliva. Just, you know, get it all gloopy and softened. In saliva, of course, we have a few enzymes. Well, the main one being amylase, which helps break down a bit of the the carbohydrates and the starches in the food. So I chewed it nice, nice into a nice bolus, and I swallowed it. Now, the food from the mouth then ends up, has to go to the stomach via the esophagus. So the esophagus is this kind of tube that I swallow the food down into. It connects the mouth and the, in the stomach, so then I have to put the food into there. Now, you would note, it doesn't go down quite so easily. I need to squeeze it down into the stomach. Things you do for your students. So, you squeeze it down into the stomach. So the stomach's there, connected to the esophagus, ready to go, there we go, nice and connected. I then need to squeeze the food through. So here we go, and this squeezing motion happens all the time. It's called peristalsis, okay? So the food is then squeezed, <laughs> the esophagus, into the stomach, like so. And then it ends up in the stomach, this whole bolus of food into the stomach. That is a very long esophagus. I don't think the esophagus is usually that long. There we go. Lovely. Food. <laughs> the food is stuck in my esophagus. Okay, we try it again. <laughs> There's still a lot of food here. The, the waves of contraction need to continue for quite a while. There we go. There's the rest of the food. There we go, there we are. My days, this is enjoyable. Lovely. So the food has now arrived in the stomach. Inside the stomach, what happens there is there are some enzymes called proteases, also called pepsin. I'm gonna add a bit of that into there. And of course we have stomach acid, which maintains a nice optimum condition, a nice low pH for the pepsin to work. So here we go, add a bit of acid into that. Then, how does it all get mixed together? The stomach is made up of muscular tissue as well, so that helps with the contractions. That contraction is called churning. So the stomach actually does squeeze as well. You don't really, see, obviously you don't see the stomach, but the stomach does do a lot of squeezing and that's called churning. So inside the stomach, as a recap, we have physical digestion and chemical digestion as well. So all that is done. Once that is all done, we've broken down all the protein because we have protease in that. So all the proteins and some of the protein, a lot of the proteins are broken down into amino acids there. We then move on into the small intestine.
Lovely. Lovely. Now, inside the small intestine, what happens first? The, um, we have enzymes as well present from there. We have lipase, proteases, and amylase present. So we're going to add a bit of enzyme coming from the pancreas and indeed from the small intestinal wall. We also then have some bile coming in, made in the liver, stored in the gallbladder, and then put into there. It helps to increase the surface area of the lipids for easier digestion by lipase. It also helps to emulsify the fats. So then the fats become smaller droplets. Okay, that's how they work. But one other thing it does, let me just add a bit of color, just the bile again. Okay, one other thing it does is it helps to neutralize the acid that's coming from the stomach. Why do we need to do that? Well, all the enzymes in the small intestine have an optimum pH that's closer to neutral. So therefore, all that acid coming from the stomach needs to be neutralized so that the enzymes can then work. So all that gets mixed into that. Lovely. Then the whole point of digestion is that we break down food into small enough particles for it to be absorbed into our bloodstream. So here's our bloodstream. Oh, if I did this, ah, ah. And we pretend that this esophagus is now the small intestine. I'm now going to go past the blood. There we go, yeah. So bloodstream, large intestine, small intestine. Yeah, you know, it makes sense. I'm going to put all of this through there. And by diffusion, substances will make its way from the small intestine into the bloodstream. So food is absorbed in the small intestine. Yeah? So it's absorption of food into the bloodstream. Lovely, look at that. Absorbed, absorbed by all the cells, all the cells, the epithelial cells, so the cells lining the small intestine have microvilli and villi. And all those cells help to absorb the food into the blood. So now the food is small enough to be absorbed into the blood because we have digested it using enzymes. So that then lands in the large intestine. Just absorb all the food. Yeah. Lovely, Charlie. Then, oh, got pink. Okay, cool. Then, Food arrives in the large intestine. What happens in the large intestine? All the liquid, all the water is absorbed. So I'm going to use a sponge to showcase the fact that I'm absorbing all the liquid, all the water from my food. Absorb, absorb, absorb. <laughs> you know what happens next. So all the liquid nicely absorbed into there. It then goes where? Into the bloodstream as well. That has not worked as well as we hoped it would. But anyway, I've absorbed all the liquid, all the water, and that happens in the large intestine. Okay, so your bloodstream gets all the nutrients, uh, all the food, all the biomolecules, you know, amino acids, glucose, glycerol, um, glycerol fatty acids, all that gets absorbed in the small intestine. In the large intestine, water gets absorbed. So it's on your blood, you're benefiting from this, you're growing, you're using all that stuff. Excellent, happy days. What happens next? I have large intestine stuff. It then becomes poo or feces. Okay? I'm gonna sculpt that nice, and then it gets stored inside your rectum. and then it builds up and then after a while you go you know what I need to poke so then it gets stored in your rectum and eventually you go to the toilet and you make poo or feces look at that 
Now, I'm going to try and burn a beautiful bit of poo. Oh, look at that. Go! More poo. Look at that. Beautiful. And there you have it. Making poo.